Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 3rd, 2020, recorded around 12.24 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, we'll take a look here at Tropical Storm Isaias, and then we'll talk about the rest of the tropics here. First of all, with the, uh, Tropical Storm Isaias, maximum sustained winds back up to 70 miles per hour pressure uh, has come up to about 995 millibars. And this is going to continue heading to the north and it eventually northeast here as it starts to now make that northeast turn around the subtropical ridge, which is sitting out here. A trough of low pressure is digging in, carrying this more up towards the north and east here. And again, tropical storm warnings remain in effect for just north of Jacksonville, all the way through the Carolinas and all the way up the north, uh, the northeast uh, corridor here with hurricane warnings uh, right along the South Carolina and North Carolina border for the possibility that this becomes a hurricane and is explicitly uh, forecast to become a hurricane uh, within the next about 12 hours as this gets ready to make landfall here on the Carol on the Carolina coastlines eventually moves off due to the north and uh, northeast here and becomes uh, post tropical within the next three days or so so what impacts can be expected well this is uh, based on the uh, National Weather Service office uh, the the basically the southeast region and uh, their graphical forecast um, again please consult the 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 official your local officials and your local weather service office for decision making but the storm information maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour moving north at 13 with gusts up to about 85 miles per hour so this is expected to be uh, near hurricane force gusts and sustained winds to near hurricane force along this area this is the wind threat here the orange is represented in the the uh, the moderate threat is in orange and the low threat here is in yellow basically the moderate is to uh, 59 to 73 miles per hour uh, sustained wind and your uh, yellow is basically 39 to 53 mile per hour sustained wind and again you can see where the track forecast is expected to have this kind of come up like this and again that's why your moderate threat is uh, from just north of um, Mount Pleasant or around Mount Pleasant, Charleston, um, Dorchester County, uh, those those areas all the way up through uh, the Outer Banks in North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, all the way up through Rodanthe and the Outer Banks, and all the way up here into uh, some of the mountainous train up here. And the low threat extends uh, from near Savannah, Georgia to near Columbia, South Carolina, and up on in through portions of South Carolina. And if we take a look here, this is the rain threat. This is, uh, again, based on the, the Weather Service Office in the Southeast and their uh, forecast graphics. But again, a moderate threat or a high threat, rather, extends right around Charleston, South Carolina. Again, these areas are very prone to flooding. I've been there a couple of times and uh, it's very prone to flooding. You know, you can get one or two inches of rain and boom, it's very, it's it's flooded. Uh, those drainage systems down there are very old down in the Mount Pleasant area, Charleston, Dorchester County, um, you know, Colleton County even. So those areas are surrounded by a high rainfall threat here. The moderate rainfall threat surrounding that all the way up through the Outer Banks and in through Wilmington, North Carolina, with the low threat extending all the way out right now to about Columbia, South Carolina, and even up into portions of Central and Southwestern North Carolina. So that is something to watch here. Again, if you are in these areas, make sure to take uh, your precautions now to stay alert. And again, you should have your final preparations uh, complete. If they are not complete, rush them the preparation as impacts are already beginning. So what's going on here with the actual storm environment? Well, this is from the aircraft reconnaissance from tropicaltibbets.com. And basically what they're finding is a disorganized, a more disorganized system than we had last night even. Now we have started to see some deeper convection try to rotate around and up shear. Again, you're still getting some of that southwesterly wind. And because this is moving due north and not northeast, right now it's still battling that southwesterly shear. As this begins to eventually turn off towards the north and east, this is going to be now running with the shear vectors, which means it's going to help ventilate the outflow. And we can take a look at that here on the visible satellite from Trop or, or from our uh, Go16 satellite viewer and our AWIPS uh, viewer here, the AWIPS work, uh, workstation. Again, a couple things to note. First of all, you notice all of this kind of kilionimbus out here in uh, 
towering cumulus and Chelionimbus. This is basically suggestive of this stratiform region with your heavier rain uh, bands kind of situated in here. You notice that big convective burst towards the end, and we can just kind of zoom in here. Again, your low-level center is roughly located in about here, and that's kind of where your low-level center is. We have a, now a lot more rain on the western sides where yesterday a lot of the near florida a lot of the western side was devoid of any deep convection well now we can start to see here if we pull up the radar viewer here and we'll kind of let it run its frames you can see a lot more of that uh, stratiform rain and deep convection rotating up shear and around the center the center of circulation is right in through here. It's still a little bit elongated, but you notice all the way up now through Charleston, Walterboro, Myrtle Beach, uh, you know, even up towards uh, Orangeburg, Columbia, Sumter, Florence, uh, those areas, even all the way down to Brunswick and Waycross and Jessup, Georgia, those areas are now starting to feel some of that outer bands. Again, if you live along I-95, which runs right about here, I-95 westward, you're not going to see much of an impact because the fact that this is now moving up like that. Now, I-95, you know, as we you know continue up here, obviously, is, is going to feel more. Uh, but again, your biggest impacts right now, especially in South Carolina, are going to be from Walterboro to Charleston, uh, even up towards Columbia and Florence, and then into North Carolina, we're talking Myrtle Beach, uh, Fayetteville, uh, Cedar Island, uh, the Outer Banks, Girl, uh, Goldsboro, Troy, those areas are now going to start to feel that outer bands, the far outer bands start to affect that area. And again, that's why we have hurricane warnings. You can see the system trying to tighten up a little bit more on approach to the Carolinas. Now, as it seems to be moving more due to the northeast and that's now starting to become a shear vector a little bit better and you can kind of see the outflow now uh, that we're trying to get we're starting to get some of that outflow on that side certainly more deeper convection than we had yesterday so certainly it's trying to become better organized and certainly excuse me will do so over the next while Again, as it continues to move off towards the north here, you can see here on the official forecast, as this begins to move north, it's going to be moving more rapidly off towards the north here. And it actually moves off our screen for our graphics here. So that's why it's not showing further up. Um, but again, you're you're going to be seeing even inland, you know, 40, you know, 60 miles per hour within the next 36 hours, which is basically up in this region after landfall. And again, tropical storm warnings uh, remain in effect all the way inland and all the way along the coast, all the way up to near uh, Connecticut. So certainly that is a very significant situation. If you live in those areas, please heed the advice of your local weather service office and government officials for any decision making in that vicinity. Going on with the rest of the tropics here, we haven't taken a, we haven't uh, took a look at this in a while. It says our sea surface temperature anomaly is updated as of yesterday. It's always a day behind. A couple of interesting things to point out here. First of all, you notice how we are definitely starting to see more of that La Nina regression pattern, and that certainly seems to be what we are heading into uh, for the remainder of uh, this year basically we are probably going to end up with a la nina pattern only a few cooler blobs in through here but we're really not seeing anything that's standing out that suggests that we're going to see uh any um you know any of this kind of getting pulled back anytime soon in the Atlantic Basin, we've seen a dramatic warm-up in the sea surface temperatures. Again, these anomalies are quite a bit above the long-term average, even all the way up here, and even all the way up across the northeastern United States and the southeast. This is a big deal because now we're starting to head into the peak of the Atlantic season, uh, Atlantic hurricane season. And again, you know, you almost you know, kind of this little cooler uh, patch in through here, surrounded by warmer, and through here, kind of your more typical a phase one AMO pattern. This certainly has a little bit of my attention because it might be able to draw a little bit of the instability uh, out of the deep tropics. And But again, with the amount of storms we've seen, about three main development region storms uh, already in July, and that is something to be uh, mindful of. Of course, Tropical Depression 10 being really the last one out here, east of the Cabo Verde Islands. Again, this is just something we really have to pay attention to. 
And in fact, we do have to watch another little area of disturbance, invest area 94L with a 60% chance here over the next five days or so. Not really concerned of land impacts at the moment, but generally heading off towards the west northwest here and then kind of stalling somewhere out in this vicinity here over the next couple of days or so right now this does not pose any significant concern for the united states mainland or bermuda but of course it is hurricane season and we need to be monitoring the progress of that Real quick look here at what's going to be going on here over the deep tropics over the next few days or so. Again, not really much going on. Of course, you have Tropical Storm Isaias expected to re-intensify into Hurricane Isaias here in a little bit. You can see here within the next 12 hours, this is approaching the Carolina coastline, really being steered around this area of subtropical ridge with our area of troughiness digging in through here. That's allowing kind of this alleyway and pinching off here that's allowing our system to get carried northward. And you notice the impacts are going to be felt well inland as well. Even all the way up into eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, the Delvmar, and even all the way up and through the state of New York and all the way into Vermont and Maine. There is going to be impacts all the way up. So if you live in those areas, do not let your guard down. Uh, just because this is making a uh, landfall over here is going to be a very fast moving system as it's going to ca get caught up within a bare tr uh, barotropic uh, low pressure system over here and kind of get scooted up with uh, some frontal genesis along that. And that should allow for more bear clinic processes to take over and make this post tropical within the next three days or so. But again, bottom line impacts are going to be felt well inland and that's very important to understand there with that. Of course, in the main development region, we'll be watching, but not really expecting to see anything down here. But if we take a look here at the European forecast model, this is your 850 millibar uh, zonal wind anomalies, basically your western and easterly winds in the atmosphere. The purples indicate your easterly winds, while your reds in, uh, reds and oranges in, uh, indicate your um, westerly winds. <laughs> And you notice out here in the main development region, we continue to see these westerly winds that continue to occur across the whole entire main development region all the way out and through uh, the middle part of August. This goes out here till uh, August 13th. So to the mid half of, of August, we continue to see these westerly winds in the main development region, suggesting a further warming event and also uh, further uh, these westerly winds at the 8,500 or, or about at the 5,000 foot level in the atmosphere. This uh, induces cyclonic vorticity in this area. So any tropical waves that come through here. Right now we're dealing with a suppressed Kelvin wave that's passing over the Atlantic Basin now. That's really going to suppress anything developing out here in the main development region. But another active phase will pass within the next about two to three weeks or so. And by the mid peak of August here, by August 13th or so, uh, beyond that, we should start to see a more favorable uh, base environment setting up across Africa and the main developed region. So luckily right now, uh, if you live obviously along the southeast, you still have to deal with uh, Isaias. Um, and obviously we'll be watching Invest Area 94L, which is expected uh, to possibly go on and develop out somewhere in this region. Generally west-northwestward track and then stalling somewhere out in this region because the area of uh, subtropical ridging is going to build back in. Kind of forcing this under weak uh, steering flow aloft. But again, one other thing to point here is uh, after these two systems, we're probably going to have a little bit of a lull. Uh, and then it is going to be time to start picking up and getting ready for the rest of the hurricane season. So uh, with that being said, of course, today was going to be a shorter video. Um, obviously, you know, we kind of been working hard. Unfortunately, we didn't get to use our camera systems like we wanted to yesterday. Uh, but that's no big deal. You know, we'll get it on the next system. We did get some stuff from our weather station sensors, and that will be kind of, uh, you know, we'll crunch the numbers on that and kind of get all of that put out into the nice graphic, and we will show that to you when the post-storm analysis is done. All right? Uh, with that being said, of course, if you live in the Carolinas and the Northeast, you're going to have a very busy uh, couple of days uh, dealing with Tropical Storm Isaias, making landfall sometime tonight or early tomorrow morning while it generally moves to the northeast, expected to become a hurricane right before landfall. So for you folks down there, you need to have your preparations complete now. If they aren't complete, rush them to completion now. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am going to be taking this afternoon off to handle uh, some college stuff and whatnot. So uh, that will be fun to deal with. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. 
I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow.